Hello, everybody. Welcome to the 14th edition of the Feel at Home Fair, this year live from the Build and Halap Museum in The Hague. The goal of the fair this year is to connect internationals. Our opening show on Channel One will be a welcome to The Hague, which will be provided by the Gemeente Den Haag. And in this, there'll be a foreword by the vet Houder Sasha Brownes, and there will also be a Q&A by the Mayor, Jan Santen. Now I'd like to invite you, like to invite the director of the Building Halal Museum to, sorry, Tom Desmet, to open officially the fair. Thank you very much. Thank you, Billy. No, hello, good morning, everyone. Thank you, Billy, for introducing me. And uh, I'm Tom Desmet, director of Sound and Vision. Uh, in The Hague. Um, I want to wish you all very welcome at the Feel at Home Fair by The Hague Online. Um, I'll tell you a little bit more on what Sound and Vision is. Well, you're not actually in the building, but it's a virtual event. Uh, and we are part of the uh, National Media Institute Sound and Vision, which is based in Hilversum, but in The Hague, we particularly focus on the role of journalism uh, and news and the way it influences the way we look at the world. Um, we, we look at the role of technology, think of filter bubbles, artificial intelligence, social media. These are all super relevant themes which we think belong in The Hague. The Hague is the international city of justice, peace, but it's also the heart of the Dutch democracy. And um, so we're super proud to be in The Hague and it all sounds very grand what we do, but what are we actually, what can you actually do? Um, we are first of all a museum, which will hopefully reopen very soon. And uh, you're all very, very welcome to come along. And after the summer, we are hopefully, we will hopefully be programming both in Dutch and English on the topics I've just mentioned. So we hope to welcome you all very soon uh, in, the Hague at this on the Zeestraat. And for now, I, well, I wish, I hope you will all feel at home very soon in The Hague and hope to see you soon on the Zeestraat. Thanks, have a fun day. Everyone, um, thank you, Billy. Thank you, uh, Tom, for your introduction to the fair. Uh, we're happy we be able to uh, organize the fair this year as well, even though it's virtual. Um, I would like to welcome you everyone to the first webinar, which is called Welcome to the Hague. Um, and my name is Gerco Vizé and I work as a policy advisor uh, for the Hague International Center, which is part of um, the city of the Hague. Um, just a little bit about my background, so you know who's speaking to you. Um, I studied political science and Middle Eastern politics. And from studying, I started to work with a lot of different migrant groups. And right now, uh, as a policy officer with, uh, uh, with experts in the city. Um, and what we'll do today is we'll share something about our knowledge um, about living and working in The Hague. And what we'll also do is we've asked a lot of the partners we work with um, to share their knowledge as well, to be able to give you a, a head start on living in The Hague. Um, we'll talk a lot about essential things during this webinar. Things like housing, education, um, language, com uh, culture, communication. Um, the rest of the Feel at Home Fair will be a lot about the more social and cultural side of living in The Hague. Um, we felt it's important to organize the fair this year to keep internationals connected. Uh, we hear a lot about that it's difficult for newcomers uh, to find a social network. And we think the Feel at Home Fair is always a great way to, uh, um, to introduce people to the big international ecosystem in the city. Um, a brief outline of what we're going to do during this webinar. Um, first, Deputy Mayor of International Affairs, Saskia Brenes, is going to give a, a warm welcome to all the viewers and to the Feel at Home Fair. Um, I will go deeper into what the Hague International Center actually does in the city and how it can help newcomers uh, to settle in. Deborah Valentine of Access uh, will join me in the studio to explain about how Access can help um, newcomers and internationals in the city. Marta from Eurohome Relocation will explain to you how to uh, find a house in The Hague. Eline from Young Expert Services uh, will guide you to the process of choosing a, uh, a school, perhaps even the childcare for your children if they relocate to The Hague as well. Um, and we'll end with a Q&A um, 
with the ma new mayor of the city, Jan van Zane, who is going to give you a um, brief introduction of why he became a mayor, but also what motivates him and what uh, he hopes to achieve for the internationals in the city. Um, but first, before we go to the deputy mayor, uh, we'll show you a little video of why The Hague is actually attractive for internationals. It will uh, give you a brief insight of all the things that we like about the city in terms of career, but also for the quality of life. Hi, my name is Daisy. I'm a business advisor at The Hague Business Agency. I want to show you The Hague and why I think it's a great place for business and personal life. I was born in the Netherlands, but I have Taiwanese, Surinamese and Chinese parts in me. I've always felt at home as a multicultural person in The Hague because diversity is normal here. The Hague is a unique city. It is small and compact with a village feeling, but yet it has all the facilities and infrastructure of a mega city. Where else could you find a city where a prime minister is biking to work or the royal family is passing by to shake hands with city residents? Life here is built around key values, peace, justice, and security, which helps create one of the highest qualities of life in the world. The Hague is the home to the Dutch government and over 100 embassies and consulates. In this city collaboration between the municipality of The Hague, businesses, Dutch universities, and entrepreneurial communities is strong and productive. This collaboration produces a unique and diverse ecosystem to help new and existing businesses to grow. To give you a sense of the scale of our ecosystem, we have five active business hubs linked to a large network of public partners, business service providers, entrepreneurs, NGOs, and international organizations closely interconnected with each other. With so many important global organizations in our city, safety is incredibly important and The Hague performs well on almost every safety metric. Everything is close by and commuting is easy. With Rotterdam and Amsterdam only a short train ride away, traveling internationally is just as simple with Schiphol Airport just around the corner. As a parent myself, I understand that a quality education is very important for families with children. And because of the highly diverse population in The Hague, our city has a great variety of international schools and organizations. You can easily find a suitable elementary or secondary school for your children close by your home. And last but not least, the Netherlands has one of the best healthcare systems in the world and our government provides multiple programs to help cover healthcare costs. Hey, thank you. Thank you. We're looking forward to seeing you soon in The Hague. Welcome back. Um, thank you, Daisy is one of the business advisors from The Hague Business Agency. Um, her director, Laurence Kok, will be joining us during the next webinar about working career and sharing their uh, insights uh, on the career in the Hague region as well. Um, I would like to introduce Saskia Bruyness, who's deputy mayor, uh, but also what we call in Dutch elderman, which is not always a familiar term uh, for English speaking people. Um, and she uh, is responsible for economic affairs, international affairs, and also municipal services in the city. Um, specifically, um, she uh, is responsible also for the city districts where so quite a lot of expats live. Um, namely the city center, but also what we call Haagse Hout, which is the neighborhoods of Bezuidenhout and Benoordenhout, where there's a lot of uh, internationals in the city, but also international schools. Um, I would like to uh, give the floor to Saskia to say a word of welcome. Thank you very much, uh, Gerko. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It's uh, my great honor to welcome everyone at the Feel at Home International Community Fair, the 14th edition already. And I'm proud our city is home to tens of thousands of people who are working every day for a better and safer world. People from all over the world to come to The Hague to solve global issues together. And the city cherishes its vibrant international community. And I very much hope that you feel at home in The Hague. This may be difficult during the lockdown. You may be far away from friends and family. 
you may worry about your job. Settling in may feel difficult for newcomers to our city who struggle to build up a social network. I think the Feel at Home Fair can help to keep internationals connected in a virtual way this time. The online fair is a meeting space where you can find everything you need to help you settle in as an international and as a person in The Hague. From social, sport, cultural clubs, international schools, service providers to international employers. You can always turn to The Hague International Centre if you need help and guidance. Their webinars today should guide you in your relocation and settling in process in The Hague. The work and career webinar will introduce you to the career opportunities for internationals. In The Hague, you may choose to work for a creative startup, an UN organization, or a multi multinational corporation, or an innovative NGO. The city of The Hague has been proud sponsor of the Feel at Home Fair for many years already. The fair is a celebration of the diversity and strength of the local international community. And I want to thank Billy Allwood and his team for all their work to bring together the international community for so many years in our city hall and in their flexibility to organize a virtual fair this year instead. Thank you very much, and I hope you really enjoy the fair. Have a very good day. Thanks. Thank you, uh, Saskia Brenes, for your uh, warm and kind uh, welcome words to everyone uh, uh, watching the fair. Um, I would like to thank you as a deputy mayor because uh, we felt in City Hall as well the always cherishes um, the vibrant international community um, and for the years of support you have given um, to our work at the International Center, but also for the people um, that come and live in the city. Thank you very much. Um, as the deputy mayor said, you can always turn to the Hague International Center for, um, uh, for help and guidance. Um, so next up, I will explain something more about what the International Center does uh, for internationals in the city and how we work. Um, but first, we'll show you a video about um, uh, how the Hague International Center has helped uh, a recent newcomer. Um, and you can actually see, because we cannot meet in City Hall where the Feel at Home Fair has been organized for many years, you can actually see where the, city where the, the Hague International Center is um, and how it looks like if you uh, come to us for help. So my name is Kirsten Mildren. I work for the United Nations. I'm Australian and I moved with a small team here. We moved to The Hague because we wanted to be closer to where humanitarian operations are around. We also wanted to move to a place where we could have a good quality of life. If I had moved here without the International Centre, I don't think I would have been able to do it. I'll be honest, because I think that when you move to a new city, it's a whole new system and it's a bit daunting. So to be able to come and, and meet with the team here and ask questions about schools and housing and where you would live in the area, all the sort of things that you need to know, it really, really helps particularly for schooling. For me, that was the biggest challenge. I have three children, three boys, different ages. I needed to get them into different schools. I was definitely contacting them to get that information. Bike riding is definitely the way to get around the city, so I've loved exploring it all through, through just riding around on the bikes. My favorite part has to be the dunes. I love it. Walking along the beach, it's great. I'm surprised every day about the locals that go surfing no matter how what the weather is like I love that it's really really focused on the outdoor lifestyle it was a great decision welcome back I forgot that actually I'm also in this video uh, so you've seen me multiple times on screen now um, just as we uh, um, I'll use a PowerPoint um, to tell you a little bit more about our services. Um, there we go. Um, because what the International Center is, we call ourselves the point of contact for internationals, especially international staff members in the Hague region. Uh, we don't just only work for the Hague, uh, we cover a wider area such as Delft, Rijswijk, Leisram Voorburg. So if you live um, close to the Hague or you have some interactions with the Hague, uh, please get in touch for our help. 
What we do is we basically offer a soft landing for internationals uh, by taking care of some things, especially we take care of some formalities. Think about your municipal registration to get a BSN number, which you're going to need to get in touch with any government agency uh, you might need in the future. Also, we work closely together with the Immigration and Naturalization Service, um, a brief usually by Dutch people um, to the IND, um, where you can collect residence documents, but also ask questions about immigration uh, in the uh, center. Um, we provide a lot of English information about your relocation process, about um, housing, education, uh, immigration, but also about um, finding your way in the Hague, uh, what to do with your children, for example, and we do this via our website, but also via welcome guide, social media, um, and we publish, for example, uh, a monthly newsletter to internationals. Um, thirdly, we provide recommendations for service providers. We work with over 80 service providers um, to basically offer assistance, but also to be able to, to give you the best uh, guidance in the city. Uh, and some of these service providers have joined us here today to share their knowledge. Um, last, we organize events, specifically Welcome to the Hague, which is the similar title to this webinar today. Um, but the Welcome to the Hague events are really for international newcomers. Um, right now they're all online, um, but the aim of the event is also to give people um, a sense of welcoming, but also to let them get in touch with other newcomers who just uh, moved to the Hague. Um, our second event uh, series is called Connect, which are informative webinars nowadays uh, about key questions uh, we're getting at the International Centre. So think about language and communication, taxes and finance, um, and we'll get back at the uh, end of the webinar to introduce you to our next upcoming events. As I mentioned, we work with over 80 uh, service providers in the city. Um, if you go to a website, um, there's a button which um, is called Partners, uh, and it lists you all the partners we work with. Um, and you have small cards where you can already see who are these partners, but also categories about, you know, think about childcare, language schools, uh, healthcare providers. It basically offers you um, a direct link to what we know as trusted and reliable service providers in the city. Um, who can offer their assistance um, and enables you to um, yeah, be introduced directly uh, rather than to Google and not being able to understand you know, which one is advertising, which one un actually offers uh, good quality. So there's a little bit of a help um, that we are uh, able to provide you. Uh, we all check them, so that's why we can say they're reliable. Um, and also these partners usually help us with organizing events uh, like the Field at Home Fair, but also during our Connect seminars. Some key tips uh, before we turn to other speakers uh, who can share their knowledge. Um, what you need to know if you move to The Hague um, during the coronavirus um, is we publish a lot of information already on our website. Uh, we give you uh, uh, updates on new measures, but also on the vaccination strategy. Um, travel restrictions, like right now, double negative testing results you have to provide to the government to be able to enter the Netherlands, um, which is what we call a coronavirus information center. Um, key um, in all the coronavirus information is the English website of the government, which is called government.nl, um, where there's a lot of information about the new measures. Usually there's press updates um, within a few minutes when the last press conference of the Prime Minister and the, ministry, uh, the Minister of, uh, of Health uh, has finished. Um, it also provides you checklists for travel restrictions, um, which may come handy if you're still abroad and you're coming to The Hague uh, pretty soon. Um, because the coronavirus crisis is a, a public health crisis, it's important to also make sure that you know and understand the health system in the Netherlands. Um, what is important for everyone is that you take out Dutch health insurance. Um, this is for say 80% of the people uh, coming new uh, to the Netherlands, they have to take out Dutch health insurance. Um, privileged people, so people working for embassies, international organizations, but also some international students, uh, they don't have to take out Dutch health insurance. But make sure that you're covered uh, because you may run into, uh, uh, into COVID somewhere. If you're infected, you may have to go to your doctor uh, or to the hospital. It's better to be insured uh, on arrival already. Important is the role of the family doctor, um, also called general practitioner in some countries, uh, who is your gatekeeper to the Dutch healthcare system. 
Uh, they're your first point of contact to understand the system, but also if you need to go to the hospital, always call your family doctor first. Family doctors are um, organized around the neighborhood. So quite often you can Google um, or go to Google Maps about finding a, a family doctor close by. Or in The Hague, you can also sign up for the International Healthcare Center, um, which is based uh, in the Benoordenhout area, which covers a, a wider regional area and is specialized in helping internationals. Um, since the start of the year in January, we started with the vaccination program. Um, we get a lot of questions about vaccinations nowadays, um, quite understandable because it's different also in every country. The Dutch vaccination program runs according to profession. So people working in healthcare have been vaccinated first. Uh, next up is medical risk um, uh, groups who have been identified by the family doctor. Um, and right now we're um, sending invitations based on age. I think it's about people between 70 and 75 are now getting invites from either the family doctor or the um, municipal health department. Um, we'll send you uh, an invite where you should go uh, at what time, um, at your own doctor or at bigger um, locations. What is important is that your municipal registration is correct, that the government actually can contact you at the right address. Um, otherwise, your invitation may get lost somewhere. Um, next up, um, what we always say is at the International Centre, we cannot do this ourselves, just as a government uh, uh, office. We work closely together with especially two partners. One is the Immigration and Naturalisation Services, so we can provide national but also um, uh, local services together. But also we work closely together with a non-for-profit access. And for us, uh, working with access is also a way um, that we can work directly with the international community. Um, internationals, um, often spouses of uh, employees relocated here, but also Dutch people with an international experience, um, volunteer in our international center uh, on a daily basis, and they make sure that we also keep connected on what's happening in the international community. Um, Deborah Valentine, the executive director, will join me soon at this table um, to have a talk about the services of Access. But first, we go to a video to hear more about uh, Access work. And Antonio in the video is actually a volunteer at our international center as well. When I arrived here, I didn't want to remain in the expat community. I really wanted to, to meet local people. So my hobby is to play uh, board games and war games with uh, little miniatures. And so I went here yeah, to, to a store and from there I met people. This is how I succeed to build my uh, Dutch social network here. In the Netherlands here, volunteering is a big, big topic. Great way to network, to meet people. It's a way to, to find your place and to do something. So I'm volunteering for ACCESS. So ACCESS is an organization helping the internationals. And so we're there to give them uh, support, uh, information uh, and help. I really enjoy uh, living in Hague. It's a, it's a great city with a lot of activities. Uh, it's a great place to live. Welcome back. I'm joined in the studio now by Deborah Valentine, Executive De Director of ACCESS. Uh, apparently in April already for 10 years now. Um, and Deborah is a Canadian, born in Germany, uh, relocated 11 times already, as a child, uh, as a spouse, as a mother of, and for her own career at the UN. Uh, so she's what you can call the career international. <laughs> um, and she speaks five languages already. Um, thank you for joining me, Deborah. Thank you for having us. Um, you're a close partner of the International Center as well. On a daily uh, basis, we work together. Uh, I think we have a group of more than 20 volunteers yep. who are working in the International Center as well. Um, can you explain a little bit about what is Access and how do you help international newcomers coming to The Hague? Yeah, certainly. Well, as also was uh, shown in the video, um, our group of volunteers are themselves partners of people who've come here to work, so they're internationals. Um, and they uh, volunteer their time by providing answers to questions, knowledge that people are looking for when they're trying to find their way in the new home. So we give them the right guidance, point them in the right direction. Thank you very much. Um, and important to know maybe is you are in the Hague International Center, but there's also other ways you can contact Access. Yes, we are at the Hague International Center, but we're also, we also work with the expat centers in Amsterdam, Utrecht and Leiden. But we have a help desk team that people can send an email to 
if there's somebody at the office, they can phone us. Unfortunately, we have uh, regre uh, regressed or redressed our office hours. But uh, our help desk at access-nl.org is an email address that people can use when they have any questions virtually about anything uh, in terms of making this feel more comfortable. Yeah, thank you. It's also um, something to point out, for example, if you do have a question because of COVID measures, you cannot just enter City Hall and visit the International Center. Uh, you'll have to send uh, us questions by email or phone in, uh, but also you can uh, reach out to Access directly and they may be able to schedule consultation hours as well. Yes, that's something new we're hoping to start in uh, early April, is uh, half hour consultations where volunteers will sit down with you online, sadly, but at least online to, uh, to have the conversations that people often need when they have so many questions. Yeah, thank you very much. And at the International Center, but also at Access, we have now had one year of experience helping international newcomers settle in uh, during the co coronavirus crisis. Um, what can you recommend newcomers if they're looking to settle in during this period? Yeah. The online world has made it uh, additionally difficult, especially for people who've been here recently. And recently we calculated about 18 months. It takes about a year to settle in a new place. So anybody who's arrived in the last 18 months will have many, many questions. Um, and although online is not the preferred medium for many, even for yourself, you know, we would much rather have a fair in person, but having the online environment at least gives us an opportunity to share the knowledge that people are looking for um, and to find at least one person that they can connect with. So our recommendations to people are, when you go to an online event, do make yourself seen or heard. Ask a question, tell people where you're from, how long you've been here, where you work. One other person will at least respond. And one connection helps you to build other connections for when we open uh, things up. And, the, and you know, one thing that I say is also very important in terms of finding connections. Connections can also be with strangers. Smile to your neighbor. Learn how to smile under the mask. Smile with our eyes. Um, we reach out to people. We let people know that we're open to connecting with them. And that can be a very small step in the right direction. Thank you for helping. Um, and I think this is, yeah, you mentioned um, people should connect online, but also try to make the effort to then, you know, for example, move towards connecting offline. Um, and I think this is also the main reason we, uh, we continue to have to feel at home fair, even virtually, uh, because it's a great way to connect um, to all the sports, social and community clubs uh, which are in The Hague. Absolutely, yeah. Um, there are many, so there are many. And, and what's not to be forgotten is that many of these groups and organizations uh, also exist or were started by people who were in the exact same position that newcomers were in. Um, and so some of them have a tradition and they know what it feels like to have to reach out, answer questions, show a smiling face, show a helping hand. So the people who understand that it's not easy. Thank you. Um, it's not the end of Deborah on the Feel at Home Fair. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's You'll not. You'll be back to quite some, I think, uh, um, can you explain a little bit about the rest of the involvement in... Today, you feel at home for yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes, I will be back uh, with uh, Volunteer The Hague to talk about uh, the opportunities of, of volunteering. And uh, later this afternoon, together with my colleague from Dutch News, uh, we'll be looking at the results of a recent survey that we did about the impact of the COVID period on the broader international community. So I will be back. It's great you're here. And uh, it's, uh, it's an important thing of how we can offer help as well as the government. Um, to involve access at a, as an international run volunteer organization. Yes. Um, they also provide those feedback, uh, and it's also great that we can offer them a stage sometimes uh, to introduce them to companies, but also to newcomers. So thank, thank you very you. much, Deborah. Thank you very much, Herco. Um, an essential part of relocation and settling in will also be your search for a perfect home. And your home is actually not just the place you live anymore, uh, it's also the place you might have to end up working for quite a bit. Uh, so that's why we've asked uh, uh, Marta from uh, Eurohome uh, Relocation Services to join us as well. Uh, Marta Galano is a global mobility manager and housing specialist uh, from Eurohome. Eurohome is a, a relocation agency in the Hague region, um, part of the bigger Voerman group, which is also a moving agency. Um, Marta is Argentinian, 
She left Buenos Aires two years ago to start a new life in the Netherlands. Um, you may ask, why did she leave her job in communications in Argentina, where the sun is always there, and move to rainy the Netherlands? Because she actually fell in love for a Dutch man. So it's what we call a love pet. Um, and she wanted to help other expats, uh, internationals, to start a new life abroad. Uh, and that's why she started working for Euro Home Relocation Agency. Thank you for joining us, Marta. Thank you, thank you, Jerjo, for the great introduction. This is my working space also when I'm working from home. So uh, welcome all, um, and thank you for having us. Yeah, uh, Marta, what, uh, from your experience as a housing specialist, um, what can you recommend to international newcomers about finding a home in The Hague? Great, okay, so if you're thinking of uh, coming here or you're about to come, congratulations, this is a great city to live. Uh, I would suggest, first of all, to consider that in here, uh, when it comes to housing, you can find uh, the typical Dutch housing and also new developments, new buildings. Uh, but for you to, to uh, be registered at your municipality, as you Herco said before, you need to be registered at the municipality. And for that, you need to make sure that the place you are going to live, the accommodation, is going to provide the registration letter. So that's why uh, in those cases, and we normally recommend short stays and service apartments. So when you are here upon arrival, you go to that place and you can go to the municipality and get your BSN, your social security number. That is the first thing. Second thing I will say, if you are going to do the search yourself, I will suggest uh, to make sure that you read the contract or to ask someone locally to check your lease agreement for you. Or if you are going to uh, work with a trusted relocation company, could be Eurohome, could be another company, but make sure that when you are working with a real estate agent, they are going sometimes to charge you a agent fee that could range from 50 uh, euros to a couple of hundreds. And sometimes if you are finding your home, they are not going to give you that money back. So make sure to reach out to Herco and uh, his team and uh, do this with a trusted partner, with a trusted company. Thank you very much for sharing your, uh, your insights, Marta. Um, do you recommend renting a house or should people also look into buying a house? That is a really good question. Uh, as uh, Deborah said, sometimes it takes up to one year to settle. So we normally recommend first come here, know your neighborhoods, know the place you do want to live. And from there, start looking for buying a house. And of course, to do that, I would suggest also to um, do it with a trusted agent, uh, with a mortgage advisor. We can also give advice on that. Herco, you from your side, you can also uh, help our international community. Uh, but first, we always recommend to get settled, to get used to the city, to the different uh, neighborhoods. If you are going to bring your kids to school, it's also good to find a place close to the school because in here, what is used um, is to find a place close to school and with a short commute. Thank you very much for your insight, Marta. Um, can you also indicate where people should look? Um, do you have some advice on popular neighborhoods? I'm not the best one because I love the Hague, so I will say to you city center, the beach, but we have plenty of neighborhoods. We can start uh, explaining about the Hague city center in there, for young uh, professionals, young families, uh, business travelers is ideal. It's always busy, so there's never a dull moment, but I will say that the price are quite high, but you are close to everything. So if you want to be close to the action, that is the place, of course. Then we can also mention Scheveningen, that is really famous among uh, expats and the international community. Um, it could be also for a young uh, professionals to be at or around the beach, but it's during summer especially is uh, noisy and it's crowded. So if you are close to the promenade, the shopping district, it will be always with people. But if you go a little bit inside like the inner neighborhood streets, you can find a quiet, calm, relaxed and uh, very safe area. The houses are huge and it's also good for families. So I would suggest close close to the beach for young um, internationals. And if you are a big family, I would suggest the inner streets. 
So then we can also mention uh, Besaudenhout. Besaudenhout is close to the city center. It's very modern. You are not going to have that Dutch traditional feeling, but it's really famous. It's really attractive for international families. It's safe. It's super clean. And um, I would say that almost no one speaks Dutch. It's very uh, international oriented, uh, but really, really attractive. The price is high normally. And we need to fight sometimes to to get a to get an apartment to get a house, but it's really attractive for the international community. Then we also have the Regentesen uh, Quartier. It's a little bit cheaper than Besaudenhout and a little bit cheaper also than city center. But in there you can uh, find the typical traditional Dutch house, full of parks, playgrounds. You can find in there a lot of sports centers. Uh, and it's quite uh, a charming Dutch uh, place to live. Um, then we have Staten Quartier. The architecture is mind blowing. In there, you will find big houses, comfortable, it's pricey. Uh, but in, in there, you have the Europol, a lot of embassies, a lot of international companies. So it will be oriented for big families and also international professionals that will work in those international uh, institutions. Then we have also Benordenhout. Benordenhout is where I'm in right now, five minutes away from the beach. Big houses, really nice um, building, uh, new buildings. And is, I would say that is the area with more, with, yeah, more parks and uh, super close to the beach, as I told you. So um, I could also mention Archipel. Archipelburg is a small neighborhood with beautiful houses, even villas you can find in there. It's pricey. Sometimes it's difficult also to find a parking space, but not impossible. Uh, but really also, really also very good, I would say, for um, the ones that are looking for a traditional style. This is very 19th century style. I can also mention a Skillboard bike. Yeah, plenty of places, but I don't want to run yeah. out of time. I, yeah, the Hague is beautiful. So first, first check it out for yourself. We can help you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Marta, for joining us. And if people are really looking for, for help to find a house in The Hague, uh, they can turn to, uh, to Eurohome. Um, they're close to the ADO, so the football stadium. Uh, so they are based in The Hague and they're great experts. Yes. Uh, here, working for a lot of companies here in The Hague as well. Um, if we bring up the PowerPoint for one second. Um, because what we can mention to you as well is we have a lot of resources if you're looking for a house. Uh, from popular neighborhoods um, to the process of renting a house, buying a house, introductions to mortgage advisors who can help you understand the process of buying a house, for example, but also information on key housing rights you may need to understand, tenancy rights if you're looking to rent a house, uh, but also uh, how the process works uh, if you're buying a house and what your rights uh, and duties are. Um, it's very important that you understand firstly um, what your rights are before accepting any house uh, or signing a contract. Um, quite often the duty of information um, is on the side of the, uh, um, the landlord. Um, we have quite strong uh, tenancy rights for the people uh, renting houses. Um, what people relocating always ask us is what is actually the price in The Hague? Um, showing you a little map with uh, prices of what we indicate. Um, houses actually uh, cost if you want to rent them in The Hague. It's of course, yeah, it differs in terms of how much is the upkeep, um, which is a specific neighborhood, uh, but it's, a, a, it's an indication of uh, how much housing, what the housing prices are in The Hague. Um, in neighborhoods around it, or in the next cities like Leiden, Delft, Rotterdam, uh, prices are actually quite comparable. Cities like Amsterdam, Utrecht, Haarlem are a lot more expensive. Um, it is important to go over whether you fall under or above a housing permit in The Hague, which is a new thing, which limits your amount of options if you have a higher salary uh, to go for cheaper housing. Um, beyond your place to live and work nowadays, it's also very important if you move to a family uh, that you can offer your children good quality education. Uh, it's one, also one of the key factors which attracts a lot of international families to The Hague. Um, so that's why we've asked Elina Housel um, to join our program as well. Uh, Elina is a teacher and entrepreneur with over 20 years of experience working with children with special needs, dyslexia, and also children learning Dutch as a second language. Uh, she's an expat herself, a mom of four, 
uh, and is one of our key partners in able to, for us to help internationals with families uh, understand how the Dutch system works, uh, especially if they're looking to go to a Dutch regular school, because the process is uh, sometimes a lot uh, more difficult than just finding an international school. Uh, so thank you for joining us, Alina. Uh, Alina will share some of her expertise about education in the Netherlands today um, with a small PowerPoint uh, uh, presentation as well to go over some key uh, questions you have to ask yourself. Um, so basically the floor is yours, Alina. Um, if you can answer a little bit of information uh, about what internationals uh, need to think about when choosing a school in The Hague. Thank you, uh, Gerco. We're happy to be uh, part of this fair. Um, first of all, um, I cannot see if the slides are on, but are the slides on, Gerco? Yeah. Yeah. There you go. All right. I would love to talk to you about how could you make the right decision by choosing an international school or a Dutch school. And this uh, presentation, I hope this presentation is going to help you to make the right choice. First of all, we always start, we can go to the next slide, we always start with the age of your child. If you have young children, and I mean between the age of four and six, it's really easy to move to the Dutch education because our education in group one and two is focused on learning through playing. So it's very easy for the children to learn the Dutch language just by playing. If your child's older, and I mean from the age of seven and up, in the Hague area, your child needs to go to a language immersion class first before it can move to a Dutch local school. If your child is seven, eight or nine years old and it goes, goes to an immersion class, it will not lose a year. So after this class, it will move to the local Dutch school into the same class of their peers. Costs are also an important thing to consider. Dutch schools are actually for free. You only pay a parental contribution between 60 and 200 euros uh, per year. And then you pay some costs for in-between school care. Um, we have two different international schools. We have funded international schools and local international schools. Uh, and I mean private international schools. The local international schools, you can find them uh, on the website called Dutch International Schools. These schools costs are between 4,000 and 8,000 euros per year. If you go to a private international school, the costs will be between 12,000 and 24,000 per year. So this is a huge difference, uh, these costs. Length of stay is also a, um, a thing to consider. If you're planning to live in the Netherlands for only two to three years, we as a company, Young Expert Services, we recommend to go to an international school. So this will give your child continu continuity and it will make it easier when you move to a next country to recognize the curriculum and speak the same language. If you're planning to stay here for a longer time, and I mean four to five, eight, ten years, it's a great step to move into the Dutch education and it's a really a way for your children to learn Dutch, for you to learn Dutch and to integrate into the Dutch culture. Um, the Dutch education offers different philosophies like Montessori, Freie School. We also have different religions, religious in school. This is different than the international schools. The international schools offer, some schools offer IB, International Baccalaureate. They offer British curriculum, American curriculum, and a European curriculum. The vacations uh, are also different from the international school and the Dutch school. The Dutch school has six weeks of summer holiday, and the international school has a much longer summer holiday. Dutch schools have a very strict, strict school attendance law. This means that you cannot take out your child at any time that you want from school, because otherwise you will get a fine. So Dutch schools have a shorter summer holiday compared to international schools, but we have some separate weeks throughout the year. The international school has a huge summer holiday and some weeks during the year. 
and uh, they are a bit more flexible on the school attendance law. Social network and logistics. Um, as um, uh, the housing uh, lady was just saying, Dutch uh, parents and, and uh, or go to school, go to a school close to their house. So children tend to bike and walk to school. If you go to an international school, uh, most of the time you will have to take your child with public transport or cars to the school. So if you really want to integrate and get to know all the, your neighbors, then it's very nice to go to a school close to your house. You will uh, meet a lot of foreign families uh, in Dutch schools because a lot of internationals choose for the Dutch education. I believe 50% of the population of expats in The Hague choose for a Dutch school. So you will meet international families in Dutch schools. And of course, in an international school, it will be full of international families. And last but not least, I want to talk about the secondary education. If your child is 12 years and older, it will need to go to a language, a secondary language school. But if it goes there, it will lose one or two years. And you need a huge vocabulary to be successful in our Dutch education. An international school might be easier if your child is 12 years and older, because it will recognize the curriculum and it might be easier if you move abroad and it will not lose a year if they are 12 years or older. If you need help uh, finding the right school in The Hague, we would love, me and our team would love to help you to find the right school. And just remember, you have done a great job bringing your children to The Hague area or to the Netherlands because Dutch children seem to be the happiest kids in the world. So your children will be this as well. Thank you. Thank you, Eline, for joining us. Um, it's not the last corporation. Um, if you actually want to know more about education and childcare in The Hague, um, you can join our upcoming uh, Connect webinar, which is on the um, uh, 23rd of March. Um, go to our website and you can uh, sign up there for uh, the Zoom webinars. And we're also joined by Zijn International Childcare, the biggest international childcare provider in the region, uh, who share their knowledge about picking international, bilingual or regular Dutch uh, childcare facilities. Um, and you can also join one of the upcoming education webinars during the Field at Home Fair. Um, there's webinars about uh, international schools, where the Rheinlands uh, um, School is, which is the head organization of the international school and the European schools, but also schools in Wassenaar, Oostgeest and Sassenheim, um, will be joined by also the Waldorf and an education consultant. Um, the Hague University of Applied Sciences and Leiden University will also offer uh, some guidance on picking your uh, higher education for your children. Um, to add to Elina's story, um, we have quite some information on our website about education and childcare. So if we go to the presentation. And yeah. Um, you can see that we also share information on which schools are actually uh, in the region. And as you can see, there's quite a lot of them. Um, what we say is um, 50, more than 50% of all the children going to international schools in the Netherlands actually go to a school in our region. Um, so the variety of schools is uh, the biggest in the country. You'll find European curriculums, American, British, uh, but even in the subsidized school, which offer an IB program, you will find different ways of approaching um, the international school. Um, we have 12 different schools, more than 20 different locations uh, as well. So look up our website if you're looking for a school. Um, what we offer as well, if we've uh, uploaded a new map, uh, which uh, indicates city highlights, uh, landmarks like stations, where City Hall is, um, but also some of the touristic areas you may uh, already be familiar with. Think like the Peace Palace uh, or Madura Dam, for example. And we also list information about where the schools are actually located. So you can also uh, determine how much you have to travel from your school to your employer, uh, to one of the, yeah, to the beach resorts, for example. Uh, it enables you to uh, really understand the city uh, and to find the best way um, to locate yourself. Um, if you're thinking about sending your kids to a regular Dutch school, um, the admission programs work a little bit different. How it works in The Hague is that you go to the website called Scholenwijzer Den Haag. 
a nice Dutch name, um, which lists all the uh, regular Dutch schools in the city. It uh, enables you to look as well as which schools offer a newcomer class uh, for primary school, uh, but also a uh, transition class for secondary school, for example. Um, but also it's important that you have to sign up to this website for schools. Uh, if you find it difficult, reach out, for example, to Elina, uh, who can offer your assistant to understanding the difference uh, between international schools and regular Dutch schools. But they also have a lot of inf uh, information about which Dutch schools actually already have a lot of expat families uh, uh, in the school, which make may make it easier to transition to the Dutch system because they have been through the process already. Um, if we close off the PowerPoint again, um, important as well is to understand, we've talked a lot about the, the more harder sides of and formalities of relocation to The Hague. Uh, it is also important to make an effort to settle in in The Hague um, because it's your new city, the Netherlands may be your new country um, and it may not be easy um, you might be, uh, yeah, well experienced in relocation, but we see more and more people uh, who move to The Hague um, as a first relocation. Uh, and it's not always easy. The Dutch as a, you know, uh, may also be direct. Um, in some countries, it, we are considered rude um, and not the easiest to become friends with. Um, we understand sometimes the difficulty on the personal side, um, you know, to really, uh, feel at home in the city. And that's why we always advise you to um, put a lot of effort in understanding the culture you're coming to um, for work, because it may be different to work with Dutch colleagues than you know, in your previous country, but also for your social life. Uh, and we have a lot of partners um, like the Royal uh, Tropics Institute, uh, but also Radboud into Languages, which is uh, attached to the University in Nijmegen. At home abroad or Ute will be on the, uh, another webinar about education later today during the field at home. They offer you help to understand the Dutch. Um, it is important that you, you do try to understand some of the cultural things you're going to run into. Um, and during our other Welcome to the Hague event for newcomers, uh, we always offer introductionary uh, courses to intercultural communication and a little bit help to understand the Dutch. Um, furthermore, um, you are, of course, coming to the Netherlands. As we always say is, um, I think the Dutch are the best non-native speakers of English in the world, um, which means that you don't need the Dutch to survive. In the supermarket, you can just speak English with the uh, person uh, if you want to find a specific item. The same goes for shops, for restaurants. Um, also in public transport, a lot of the communication is already in English. Um, but learning some words may show interest. Uh, to get to know the other culture. It might help you in your neighborhood to get to, to, get to know your neighbors. Um, but we always recommend, if you think about staying longer, do put some effort into learning Dutch. Um, because if you're on a more advanced level, it can greatly enhance your integration to society, but also open up new social networks. Um, because you will find out that we do have international clubs and networks, but there's a lot more available if you learn some Dutch. Um, but also it opens you up to career opportunities. If you do not work in some of the international organizations or multinationals, there's a lot more career opportunities if you learn Dutch, especially if you're looking for a general staff position, but more on that later during the next webinar. Um, and some of our partnered organizations helping for intercultural communication, but also for language are actually present during the fair. Uh, so join, for example, Kickstart or Direct Dutch at their virtual booth uh, to see how they can help you understand uh, what you need to do to learn Dutch. Beyond uh, career opportunities, The Hague is actually known for its high quality of life, especially for families. Um, and The Hague offers a lot of possibilities um, of a big city with a small, a small town charm, as we like to call it in the city center, uh, the city um, government. Um, the city is made up of a variety of neighborhoods. Martha already explained to you about some, uh, but there's a lot more variety. Um, neighborhoods close to the historic city center, which is centered around the, the parliament, we call the Binnenhof, um, but also uh, neighborhoods close to the beach, um, very close to the dunes, or um, the Hague Central Park, which is the Haagse Bos, or Hague Forest, uh, which is next to the central station. Uh, important in attracting new people is always that we are 
um, the only big Dutch city close to the beach, um, which we have 11 kilometers of coastline uh, and two beach resorts. Um, and it's just 10 minutes uh, bike ride from the historic city center to one of the beach resorts. Um, what's more, The Hague is known as one of the greenest cities of Europe. Um, plenty of parks, the dunes, and a lot of uh, uh, places to enjoy. Um, we'll go now to uh, a video from The Hague and Partners, specifically their um, agency which helps to attract tourists to the city, um, because they have a lot of information and insights into hotels, but also in what to do even during Corona times. Bow tie ride. Perfect. There is a little rhyme here in The Hague. It doesn't rhyme in English, but it goes a little bit like this. In The Hague there lives an earl, and his son is called Jantje. And if you ask him where lives your dad, he's pointing his little finger to the castle in the opposite. Well, fairy tales are gone, because the castle now is Parliament. During the 16th century, the golden age of the Netherlands, all those reviving cities like Amsterdam, Rotterdam, Delft, were looking for one place where they could have parliament. And that was The Hague. Why The Hague? Because we were a village. And at the moment, with 530,000 inhabitants, we're still a village and therefore the largest village for Europe. And in these beautiful surroundings in the middle of The Hague, I want to show you other things because the real beauty is in the art. We have the largest concentration of museums of the Netherlands and I want to show you beautiful parts of this art. So follow me. We're at Museum Panorama Mesdag, called after Mr. Mesdag. And he had a huge, big love for the visitors' village Scheveningen. But Scheveningen, his, his beloved village, it changed. And he wanted to paint Scheveningen once more as it was. And he did so in a panorama, 360 degrees around of the history and how it was in 1880. This you could sell, not your husband. So slowly this small vicious village grew out to be a spa, a resort. And that started already. Thank you, Remco, for explaining some of the things um, you can do in The Hague. Um, he's working for The Hague Marketing Bureau, uh, which they have a, a central website, denhaag.com. Um, where you can find everything what is on offer in the city. There's a lot of corona-proof activities, virtual tours, uh, virtu uh, VR tours of the city, but also a lot of local initiatives you can support. So think about uh, a restaurant tour to the city center and other neighborhoods. Um, the Hague has a new uh, mayor since the summer of this year, um, and we thought the Feel at Home Fair might also be a great way to introduce the mayor um, to the international community, but also to um, think about you know, what motivates him, what are his plans for the international community. Um, so that's why he took uh, the opportunity to do a Q&A before uh, with the mayor. Hello, my name is Jan van Zane. I'm your mayor since the 1st of July of last year. Previously, I was mayor of Utrecht, right in the heart of the Netherlands, and before that of Amstelveen in the Amsterdam area. And I consider it a great honor to be the mayor of The Hague because The Hague is where the beating heart of the Netherlands democracy lies. Plus, The Hague is the international city of peace and justice. And that international dimension appeals to me greatly. As mayor of The Hague, I intend to do all I can to strengthen the international profile of our city. Well, as I mentioned, I like the international character of The Hague a city of peace and justice, The Hague is clearly quite different from other cities in the Netherlands. I also think The Hague is a beautiful and very green city, not to mention its unique seaside location. Wow! No description can do justice to the real beauty of The Hague. But the thing I like most about The Hague is its people.
As you probably know, as mayor, I'm primarily responsible for public order and the security of the city. Those are my prime concerns, but also my tasks. Alongside that, I want to make sure that our residents can have faith in the city and its government. And finally, I hope to be able to bring people together and to build bridges between the different parts of the city. Everyone in The Hague must have the same opportunities. Well, although COVID-19 hasn't made it easy, I have already visited a number of them. And I'm impressed by the wide variety of organizations. They are all based in our city, to mention from the international courts to the European organizations working on peace and justice, peace and security, such as Europol, Eurojust, as well as NATO and the OPCW. Not to mention the hundreds of NGOs working on the same issues. Their presence is not only important to the Hague, in terms of jobs, 40,000 by the way, but they also form the cornerstone of our profile as City of Peace and Justice. And they do important work helping to create a better world for everyone. Indeed, these are difficult times for everyone. And I can well imagine that the international miss their family and friends abroad but I can't do anything to change the current situation. We all have to get through this together. And now that the vaccination program has begun, we can see light at the end of the tunnel. Myself, I spent a year in the United States studying at Cornell Law School in New York. And apart from the academic knowledge I gained there, I found living in a completely different environment and in a different culture with different people to be very enriching. And I, I still love to think about that. It was a tremendous time. I would say try to discover and see as much of The Hague as you can, as far as that's possible, of course, given the coronavirus measures. Explore the city on foot, rent a bike, feel the atmosphere of the city, enjoy its wonderful parks and areas of natural beauty, the sea. And don't forget, even though much most Dutch people speak English, it also helps a great deal when you learn a few Dutch words. That's very funny. I hope you soon feel at home. Connecting internationals to The Hague, that's what we want to do. Be welcome. Welcome back. This was the, uh, this is the end of the webinar. Um, we hope you learned a lot from the show. If you have questions, uh, ask them at the virtual booth of the International Center or drop us an email uh, during any of the working days of the week. Um, please stay in touch. You connect, can connect on us, uh, with us on Twitter, uh, Facebook or LinkedIn. But also you can sign up for a monthly newsletter with updates about everything you need to know in The Hague. Um, or visit one of our new uh, uh, upcoming webinars such as uh, Connect Education and Child Care, about housing, about families and children, or also about legal matters. Um, we hope you have uh, enjoyed the webinar. We hope you enjoy the uh, rest of the Field at Home Fair. Uh, and please join me at the next webinar where we talk about work and career opportunities in the Hague region. Thank you very much.